What is up, YouTube? It's me, Angry Jackaloop, Robert R. Ricks. It is now Saturday. Hang on, turn this thing off. There we go. Saturday, November 14th, 2020. What's up, motherfuckers? So, uh, look, look, look. Come on. Come close. Come. Come closer. There we go. All right, so now we're nice and close. All right, so what are we going to talk about? Got a lot of shit. Got a lot of shit. But first, I got to say what's up to my motherfuckers that are here nice and early. We got Kanet Haya. What's up? First in the box. Then we got Bronx Jackalo. Sonny Michael. Stocky Wolf. He's also a custom knife maker, if you guys didn't know. Check out his shit. We got Rob Rob Rob. Simicon in the motherfucker. Simicon has his own uh, YouTube show. He's got uh, some cool shit he talks about. Watches and uh, blades and other fun shit. We got the Paula Lucky Lope. What's up, Earth? And we got Garen. So, how am I feeling? I ah, loaded as motherfucking question, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see. So, I guess I'll share the news with the world. Uh, I really did fuck up my ankle pretty well you know it's bad when you go to see your doctor and he's reviewing the notes from the MRI and he goes wow you did real good here and I'm like ah oh, fuck what's up yakety yak and so I'm like well fuck doc what are we looking at here and he said tendon one torn tendon two torn tendon three torn tendon four torn Bone spur in the back of the heel is uh, also compounded, and in, in, uh, it's uh, kind of a pain in the Achilles. And I'm like, yep. And, of course, the wifey wife is on. Hello, wifey wife, you sexy bitch. Ooh. Ooh. Should I watch language? Fuck that. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so I have operation planned. Uh, it's going to pop off December 16th. And uh, it's it's not looking like it's gonna be a uh, whole lot of fun. Um, basically, they're just gonna they're gonna fucking slice my shit open, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna rebuild my shit. So in some ways, I'm gonna be like the motherfucking six million dollar man. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be something else. Uh, Recovery is gonna be kind of crazy, and it's funny because I'm already I'm already walking around in a boot a walking boot and i was walking with my well my wife and my son were already in a car waiting for me and my slow ass was hobbling to the car and this fucking lady stopped and was started we fucking had a full conversation in the middle of the fucking road she's like yeah i had i had uh my my uh uh bone spurs shaved off in 2004 and 2006 and you just gotta keep walking and like she was like Pep talking me, and I was like, fucking A, right on. Okay, she kind of paid what I was going to have happen. And I, well, the bone spur part's only one part. The other tendons are completely separate fucking thing. But anyway, you slice it, it fucking is going to suck. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, Monday, you know, the uh, episode 43, I think it was, or 34, 43, somewhere. And my dyslexia might be fucking, I'm pretty sure it's episode 43. It's the last one. Uh, Monday Tops Daily Grind, I was on there. They also popped off some news that in Idaho, uh, they got shut down because of the Rona shit. So, you know, their business was affected. And then they also got some bad news uh, on the 7th. I believe um, Mike Fuller, the founder of Tops, uh, passed, and so I wanted to pay him some respect and actually tell a a quick little story about Mike, um, because you know he was a classy motherfucker. I really did like him a lot, and um, you know he was just a real cool dude. Way before all of this angry jackalope shit, I had. A venture I was trying to get off the ground called Rymas Solutions. And what Rymas Solutions was going to be, it was going to be disaster preparedness. And I was trying to kit together the ultimate go bag. 
and try to keep it cost effective. And I reached out to Mike and I was enamored with the Tom Brown tracker, if I recall correctly. And then I said, uh, um, I was on the phone with Mike and I said, hey man, I want these motherfucking Tom Brown tracker. And he said, for what? And I told him for what? And he goes, okay, uh, wholesale price is this. What are you going to sell it for? And I said, wholesale price. And he's like, what? How are you going to make money? I said, I'm not really in it to make a lot of money. I'm in this shit to put together kits that will save lives. And he liked that. And that was kind of like the beginning of our friendship. And he was just a really cool motherfucker. And he pointed out a couple other products that he thought would be perfect in a go bag. And we went back and forth. And uh, one thing led to another. And life came along. And I just couldn't get Rymas solutions off the ground. And um, lo and behold, a few years later, actually maybe six, seven years later, when I started this shit, uh, and I started getting, you know, fucking around with the blades and whatnot. Of course, I had to go right back to tops, and um, you know, started my relationship with Craig and those guys, and have been riding with tops ever since. So I've seen Mike a few times at some of the shows, and you know, hugged him, said what's up, hi, and all this other stuff. I never really had a chance to sit down and hang out with him, and uh, he's a real cool motherfucker. And that's my, my only thing I'm a little bit bummed about. Like, I really wanted to sit down and talk shop with him. Like, really, really. But, you know, it, it, it just didn't happen. So, you know, Mike, if you're looking down, uh, motherfucker, you know, you know, I respect you and uh, much love. And, you know, and uh, I know you're in a better place. So, for those who really, really knew him and loved him, and you have that emptiness in your heart, just know that your fond memories of him, as long as you keep that alive in your heart, those don't die. You know, he still lives on through you, and, and obviously by us telling stories and whatnot. So, anyway, uh, I'd rather celebrate uh, somebody that I know as opposed to some celebrity or whatever that fucking dies. And we're having celebrities dropping left and right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we we know we we see motherfuckers uh the guy from jeopardy popped so you know it, it, and then before that was some more people so 2020 has been fucking brutal uh since i mentioned tops getting shut down temporarily because of uh the rona and whatnot i figure we might as well talk about the second wave so you know talk about the second wave also talking about the uh vaccine from pfizer whatever um Pfizer, Pfizer, whatever fucking company, they're all kind of full of shit. Um, I know for a fact I will not be lined up. I will be not lined up number one for whatever the fuck they want to inject people with. And before people get all excited about a fast-tracked vaccine, please do your due diligence and research the uh, bird flu, um, the bird flu vaccine of 1973. The only thing I want to talk about here. This is super important, guys. Now, understand, when I say stuff like, I'm not going to take this vaccine and stuff, it's not, I'm not wearing a conspiratorial hat. Basically, I'm not, it's like even software, okay? I don't want to be using version one of some software because there's going to be bugs. There's going to be some fucking problems. So, being that this is not Ebola or something that is you know, killing motherfuckers in mass, I don't really see a, a reason for me to fast track them injecting some shit in me. I don't even take a fucking flu vaccine for God's sake. So, you know, when I say I'm not going to take it, don't get it twisted like, oh yeah, the government's going to put chips in us and everything else. Because I don't have any data to substantiate that. I don't trust these motherfuckers, but it doesn't mean that I'm saying this whole fucking thing is fake. Which leads me to the next point of topic I want to talk about. Here in Utah, we've got some knuckleheads that are causing problems in the hospitals. They're saying that, you know, it's it, the hospitals aren't full, the hospitals are full of shit, and blah, blah, blah. Look, my wife works at the hospital. So when she comes home and tells me they are experiencing a crunch, I believe her. I don't have to look any further than that. 
But when I hear news stories of people saying, hey, I'm going to use your bathroom, and then they jet to the ICU with their phones acting like Dick Tracy or some fucking Nancy Drew motherfucker to prove the conspiracy, all they're doing is taking away resources. Because when the nurses and everybody else is chasing their dumb asses away, that's taking resources away from patients who vitally need it. Now, you don't have a lot of nurses and stuff that are basically you know, dropping dead or getting sick from stuff. But what you do see happening is a lot of nurses and doctors and healthcare workers being extremely overworked, overwhelmed, underappreciated as if this is anything new. This is kind of, on, on the best days, nurses have a really shitty job. And I do mean that actually literally, but also figuratively because they they don't get normal breaks. You know, I remember my mom and dad telling me stories of working a whole shift and not getting a fucking lunch break or being able to go to the bathroom and take a piss or take a shit, right? Because it's just too fucking crazy. Both my mom and dad worked in the fucking ER and uh, my wife also has been working in ED as well. So when they are overworked, they're the unsung heroes, that's on a normal day. Compound the fact with people, hypochondriacs, coming in saying, well, I got tested positive with the Rona, and I think I'm fucking dying. And then they check them, you're like, motherfucker, you're fine. Go to fuck home, right? Go to fuck home. So, yeah, there are a lot of people filling up the ERs. There's a lot of people inside of the ICUs. And it's not just it's not just because of the Rona, but there's Rona-related Rona related things. You've got a lot of people battling with crazy depression. So you got people coming in with suicide. You got people coming in with suicidal thoughts, which also takes resources. You've got people that are coming in from the seasonal shit, you know, because this is winter now, so we are going to be seeing an influx of influenza, which is normal. But it's not like these hospitals stay super packed. I mean, not packed, but super uh, 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 empty, right? It's not like the hospitals have hundreds of thousands of beds per hospital. You know, each hospital has a finite number of beds that they anticipate a certain number of people coming in, which is why things like pandemics are always a terrifying situation, right? Because if you have a real pandemic pop off and you have people sitting there, like taking up all the beds, you got people in the hallways, you got blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a bad, bad situation. So for the love of fucking God, people, have some fucking common courtesy don't jump to conclusions. And for the love of God, please, please, please don't sneak into the fucking hospitals. Because all that's going to do is really fuck it up for patients that really need that, that resource. Okay? All right. Because it's not like we're at the end. You know? We're not like we're in the end. And as far as testing positive and testing negative for, for the Rona, shit, look at Elon Musk. He just fucking tweeted. He took four fucking tests same day. Came back with two positives and two fucking negatives. That's a 50-50. So, people, just take it with a grain of salt. Like, if you really feel fucking horrible and they test you and they say you're fucking positive, fine. You're going to treat it accordingly. But if, you know, you feel fine and everything else and you get tested for whatever reason and you're positive but you don't feel like anything, which is what the vast majority of people that I've talked to who have gotten it, Count yourself lucky and be like, cool. You know what I mean? Awesome. All right. Now. Oh, look. It's no. Is it? No. Ah, is it? Could it possibly? No, it's not the end, guys. It's not the fucking end. People need to chill the fuck out. Everything that's happening right now has all been designed for one specific fucking thing. To keep us divided. To create chaos. To create strife. To create negativity. We talk about this all the time. Rob says, uh, when we were talking earlier about the uh, operation, he said, I will like the nerve block. They'll give me, I won't feel my legs for days. I think that's going to be a good thing. Uh, Kinect says, his next knife purchase will definitely be a tops. That's fucking awesome. Uh, did I hear about Mike Stewart of Bark River? No, I didn't. Did something happen to him? Uh, and Rob also saying his hospital is as full as canned sardines. I believe it. Look, guys, there's something going on, and, and especially after last week we were talking about the uh, the minks. You know, I definitely think this is the second phase of something. I don't know what it is yet, 
But again, I think the most important thing for all of us is to chill the fuck out, keep our heads positive, and remember what we believe is the reality. So try not to believe the hype. What's up, Vixen? How you doing? All right. Now, before I get into my normal games, TV, music, and all the other fun stuff uh, that we talk about normally, there's been something that me and my wife have been discovering on YouTube that is a guilty goddamn pleasure. I mean, it's a guilty fucking pleasure that I would be a complete cocksucker if I didn't share with you. There is this gentleman that goes by the name of Steve, 1989. And this guy right here is fucking a food Chuck Norris, okay? This guy, when the apocalypse comes, I mean, when legit the end comes, the only two things left on this planet will be cockroaches and Steve. Because this dude, this dude is amazing. So what he does, he is, he is the living, breathing embodiment of the word passion, okay? So his passion happens to be MREs, okay? He likes MREs, and he is enamored. This dude is in love with old school, and I do mean old fucking school MREs, okay? He seems to be like one of the nicest guys on the fucking planet, but he will take a 1945 MRE, MRE that has been... And for folks who don't know what the fuck MREs are, that's like meal ready to eat. These are these are uh, military food packets that uh, the troops would use, you know. And um, yeah, just okay. And um, he will grab something from nineteen forty fucking five, and the canister will be broken, and he'll open it up. And go oh. Oh wow, wow, this smells rancid. Oh, this oh this smells rancid. And he will proceed to plate it on a metal tray and will give these really cool little reviews, what he thinks things are. He'll talk about historical context of things, and he will eat shit that you know is probably gonna kill a mere mortal. Alright? And he just he's just is this a pleasure? He is a guilty fucking pleasure. I promise you guys, you watch one or two of his old school episodes, you will fucking thank me. Me and a wife will watch. We we use his little catchphrases. Yes, he yes, Rob's right. He tries other countries, and because of that shit, dude, I have never wanted to eat MREs as much as like I I don't smoke cigarettes. But this motherfucker makes me want to smoke cigarettes because he'll grab a cigarette pack from 1940 and go, hmm, let's do a dry pull on this. Oh, it's got a full body. It's got that tobacco wetness to it. And then he'll he'll light it. And I have never in my entire life seen a motherfucker so happy. Like this, oh, I, I you just have to watch him. You will know the definition of passion when you see this dude. And the shit that he does is not cheap. He'll get a he'll get a fucking old pack. It'll be like one of five left in existence. And he'll pay twelve hundred dollars for it. You know? And he'll take it apart and he's really careful about the packaging and whatnot, because there's other people in the industry that want those packaging because they'll do replicas and shit for movies and whatnot. And you know, it the dude is like a hardcore fucking collector, hardcore fan, hardcore genius he he deserves every last one of his uh of his fucking uh fans that's all i gotta say about that okay all right now moving right along so steve steve 1989 looks like a few of you have tried i've seen his shit like i know rob has it looks like yak has but this motherfucker is out Standing. So my wife one day, we, we come across like I'll be trying to sleep and she'll be watching certain shows and you know, YouTube makes recommendations and whatnot. So one night she was listening to a particular dude and you know, it sounded like a chef at first and then he started dropping F-bombs and I'm like, what? And I started like, my ears started, what the 
fuck? What am I hearing here? This sounds like a kindred spirit right here. And my wife goes, oh my God, this fucking guy. Like, wow, wow, he's so, oh my God. Like, wow. She was just like, like, taking it aback, right? I said, babe, can you uh, send me that on Facebook so I can check it out tomorrow? And so I checked out this next guy. His name is Marty Matheson. And he's a chef. Like, he, he cooks. He's got a couple of books out. You can find him on Amazon. His shows are fucking brilliant. This dude is another guy. Is a different type of passion play than Steve. Okay, totally different energy. But today, I watched these episodes at the bottom left. If you see slide showing there, shepherd's pie, chicken and oh, chicken dumplings. I can't wait to try that recipe. Uh, Cincinnati chili. Holy fuck. I laughed so fucking hard watching this dude shit. And I laughed and I was starving at the same time. So this is another motherfucker you want to check out. His name is Marty Matheson. He's got like the, 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 the playlist that I absolutely love is just a dash. If you watch that shit, oh my God, this dude, this dude is fucking, no, this is a filthy Gordon Ramsay. This is a fucking filthy ass Gordon Ramsay. Like this dude is covered from head. And I kid you not covered from tattoos from head to toe. This dude does not give a fuck about what you think of him. And his his recipes, they're pretty good. You know, it's, and they're not his own recipes. He gives credit where credit is due. Uh, Maddie. Maddie, sorry. Maddie Matheson. So, I thought it was Marty. But Maddie, my bad. In any way you slice it, this some bitch right here is fucking awesome. He's so awesome, like, I, I really want to buy his, his fucking... Home style cookery books. Like, it's just fucking, it's fucking brilliant. It was fucking, so, you gotta check those two channels out. You, you just gotta. And then when you do, and you watch them, you're like, God damn it, Rob! I fucking pissed my pants, because I know, I, I almost, like, this morning I was sitting there cracking up. So, anyway, the other thing I want to point out is, I'm going to be drinking a little bit of uh, Bulldog. Long-time viewers know this is my absolute most favorite fucking root beer on the planet. It comes out of Washington. Uh, it's really hard to find this. If you can find it, you're fucking blessed and lucky. My wife found a source out here, and bless her fucking heart, she bought me some that I've been, like, sipping on like it's like a fucking 10 year aged fucking scotch or 100 years scotch or whatever and uh i think i may need this because earlier today we were out shopping and my wife came across this at the asian store god help us so this is a uh, kava uh for you motherfuckers who are unaware what kava is um <laughs> uh this shit well, uh, this shit is like legalized mellow man chill pill shit. So this is the embodiment of chill pill from fucking Polynesia, right? Like every Polynesian culture for the most part. Woo, woo, woo. Come on, focus, bitch. Focus, focus. Why is this bitch not focusing? There we go. Uh, every Polynesian culture rocks this shit, okay? And it says, Kava's a natural herbal tea has been used for thousands, thousands, thousands of years in the South Pacific Islands to help reduce stress, anxiety, help manage pain, promote weight loss, naturally relieve muscle tension, and promote emotional and physical relaxation. Okay? It says, drinking it can help reduce social inhibitions and induce a sense of euphoria and well-being. Okay? Uh, all right, Rob. See you next week, brother. So, wife brewed some of this up, and I already heard her go, oh, oh, she tried it, and she said, my tongue's getting numb. I'm like, oh, fuck me. So, um, you can see the shit looks like mud. Which actually makes sense because their tagline on this is live clean, drink dirty. 
fucking God help me. So I'm going to do this for you guys. I, I, I was debating it early in the show, but I'm like, uh, you know, I don't know if it's like Kratom or not. Um, oh, my God. It smells like, oh. Oh, that smells horrible. That smells like asshole of a fucking bum who's been living in his own fucking shit for like a month. Oh, Jesus Christ, help me. All right, well, fuck it. Cheers, motherfucker. Let's see how this shit is. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. That's not as bad. It's it's a weird flavor. It's kind of like... Um, Whoa, John Doe, greetings from Poland. We use vodka for that. You know what? I use vodka for that shit too, but... I, 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 fuck, I, I tried this, so here we go again. It's not, oh, wait, oh, I got it now. Oh, got it, oh, I guess it just wasn't mixed. Hang on. Woo! Ah! <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, it's bitter. It's mad bitter, but it's like a, it's a quick, wow. It's a, it's a, it's a quick, it's a quick bitter though, like it it attacks your tongue for half a second, then it's gone, and it's a uh, wow. Oh, my tongue is numb, dude. You know what this reminds me of? It's like licking a banana slug. I know that sounds really fucking gross, but we did wilderness one one time, and they were like, "Hey, who's brave enough to lick a banana slug?" And I'm like, "I will," and I licked the banana slug, and my tongue went numb. Huh? Yeah. It's not bad. Oh, damn, my tongue. Wow. That is weird. Yep, now my, my lips are a little numb. My tongue, yep. No, <laughs> my Oh, some of that shit got to the bottom of there. That last little gulp was nasty. It tasted like kind of like dirt, dirt, mud. <clears throat> not really asshole. It smells way worse than it tastes. Taste wise, it's not too bad. So we'll see during the conversation here if this kava does it. It might, yeah. You know what? I'm trying to be real neutral about this shit because I don't know, but it's a kava from Tonga. Oh, kava. Oh, whatever. Let's go. All right. So let's move right along now. Games. So I rocked the new DLC 2 for the arms race for Borderlands 3. And I'm going to give you kind of like my, my quick uh, overview of it. Okay. So you... Get into the game area. You get Salvador. You got some other uh, and Axel uh, from Borderlands Two. So they're both there. They're like game show hosts. They bought this fucking uh, big battle arena, and they're trying to make a show. And so you basically go in damn near naked. Like you have none of your abilities, none of your gear, nothing. You just drop in, and immediately you have to start grabbing shit from a uh, chest and kind of going and you know just fighting your way and trying not to get killed by this, this storm. So if you play things like Fortnite, some of these other types of games that are similar to that, that's what it is. And so I played it a little bit and I was like, all right, whatever. Now the fourth skill tree, that was kind of interesting. I only got, I only got a chance to do it with uh, Zane and uh, the shoulder cannon, the predator shit didn't feel very powerful. And so I played it a little bit, and I was kind of like, eh, eh. So as far as it worth 15 bucks, sure, if you're a hardcore Borderlands player like myself, and you, you're looking forward to kind of mixing up that fourth skill tree and seeing what's what, it is kind of fun. You know, uh, do I think it's a super exciting fun thing? Nah, now if I had a bunch of actual friends to go in and do the... Uh, you know, the arms, arms race stuff, maybe it would be a lot more fun. But as a solo player jumping into it, not really, not really. All right. 
So let's move on to some bad news. One division, which last week I was sure, I was positive was going to pop off in December. Well, I got fucked in the ass. Disney delayed this motherfucker, and it's not coming out till January 15th, 2021. So, alas, no motherfucking WandaVision. And that really, really pisses me off. I was so looking forward to it. So looking forward to it. Now, I did get a chance to watch Trimmers. And let me tell you, it is cheese dick. It is really over the top. It is really, really fucking good. It was super good. I was so happy with this fucking show. If you liked any, and I do mean any, including the first one, any of Trimmers, you will absolutely love this. And if you did like I did, and you've watched all seven of these motherfucking movies, the ending is very satisfying. It is bittersweet. It is really, really, really good. So if you get a chance, check it out. Check it out. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Kinnett. Cyberpunk. Oh, my. I got a, I got a chub and a half for that motherfucker. Now, the other day, me and a wife were just kind of lounging around, and I said, I was on a couch in pain, and I said, she's like, oh, you want to watch some shit? I said, I don't give a fuck. Just whatever you want to watch. I don't give a shit. And then she clicked this shit. What the fuck? Okay, so this is called Nurse Ratchet, okay? And this is from the story One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which I vaguely, vaguely recall, but... That's so long ago, I don't remember. And oh my god. This was so good. The acting was superb. The uh, cinematography, this, this, the, the way they shot it was amazing. The music was appropriate. Let me tell you how good this was. They had gay shit in it. And normally, if they got a lot of gay shit in it, like, I'm done. I'm out. That's what happened with, you know, Bly, whatever, Bly, Bly Manor, House on Bly Manor, whatever it was called. Uh, but this right here, my wife at one point looked at me and said, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, keep it going. Keep it going. We watched, in one sitting, we watched all of it. And there were parts, I was getting fatigued. I was I was tired at a couple of spots. Like, okay, it's done, right? Movie, this 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 this, this shit's done, right? No, and I'm like, oh my god, are they gonna keep it going? And then it gets good again. I'm like, damn it, why do they keep fucking with me like this? And it was it was, they sprinkled in some conspiratorial shit in here that I was like, oh knowledge, you know. And it was like, wow. So this was really good. This was yeah, she's she's this what she's a fucking she's she's cuckoo. She's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but I tell you, you want to talk dark shit. You want to talk dark storytelling. Man oh man. Her origin story part, Jesus. Jesus loves you. I was like, wow. It was dark. It was dark. They went there a lot. And um uh, I, I can't actually give this enough praise. Like, I was super, super satisfied with it. I really liked it. So, yeah, Ratchet was, was really good. Then, uh, yesterday, this popped. We watched this. And we were like, and these are really, these ones right here on Prime, these are really short episodes. So, there's like eight of them. It's like 30 minutes. So, it's like a four-hour ride. But this one... This was good, too. There was good humor to it. There was, like, really authentic creepiness. And there were some couple spots that were kind of crazy. Uh, it was good seeing, you know, the main character and the guy that he normally does all of his shows with. You know, Shaun of the Dead, etc. And it, it, it was good. It was good. There was a couple parts where you're like, huh. Huh. So this one had us kind of like, wow, this is really good. But, again, 
not to keep ratcheting this shit up and, and, and kicking a dead horse or whatever. But this shit, man, right? We thought we had some shit figured out. Man, try again, motherfucker. We we're like, what the fuck? That, you know what? That's, that's what I would say on this one. It's what the fuck? This was what the fuck? But this was fun. This was a fun one. This was a really good fun one. So there you go. And again, fuck Disney on this shit. Fucking pisses me off. Um, True Seekers to Utopia, they're no, they're totally different. Totally different. True Seekers is kind of a lighthearted, um, supernatural nod to like ghost hunting and stuff like that with like a, a pretty good, a pretty good backstory. Utopia is, whoa, Utopia is dark and, and really fucked up in a lot of ways. Uh, and, and Utopia has highlights to it. It also has some parts that were really not good. Uh, but this one, True Seekers, um, most of the acting is, is about what you would expect from like Shot of the Dead cast. Uh, you don't expect too much. You go in and you watch it for what it is, and it's a fun joyride. It was, it was a fun ride. Uh, as far as like, you know, comparing True Seekers and Ratchet, Ratchet is like Academy Award level on all levels where true seekers is like you know midnight matinee popcorn fun okay that's how you gotta look at those um music wise excuse me acdc popped off uh, i was listening to the entire album on spotify and all i can say about this album is it feels really short it feels really short like you listen to it and when you have songs that are like two minutes and 30 seconds long, you kind of go, ah, yeah. Um, and it's, there's really not a lot of tracks that kind of stand out. It's good ACDC. It's solid. It's fun. It's got a real good vibe to it. But it doesn't have anything that really super jumps out at you other than uh, Shot, uh, I think it's what, Shot in the Dark. I think it's the, the, the main track that really... Uh, kind of stands out on it but if you really wanted some good acdc there you go okay so uh that is that all right so let's see i think that's pretty much all i really have planned um to discuss for tonight and everything else and it just ended up kind of kind of going a lot faster that this stuff right here I I am feeling, uh, I'm actually feeling pretty mellow. Like I'm feeling, you know, with like when you get buzzed with alcohol, right? You get kind of this really tingly kind of cool little vibe. This has a very similar thing. Uh, it's very similar, but mental mental sharpness is still there. Nothing's nothing's blunt. Trimmers is sitting on uh, Netflix. It's on Netflix. I believe it's on Netflix. Let's see. It's on digital Blu-ray and DVD, but it's also sitting up there on Netflix. I did see, I was inside of um, Walmart earlier, and inside of Walmart, they do have a special box set, uh, like all seven of them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. Short. What do you expect? They were old. They have to go take a piss every three or four minutes. Yeah, but, you know, you're in a studio, right? You're laying down tracks. And when they do a show, uh, I'm pretty sure they're wearing diapers or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you see Angus still jumping around doing shit. So, you know, big big props to them. Um, or you can say, you know, they sold their souls to the devil. And the devil still gives them the energy to rock and roll. But in any event... It is quality. It's not bad. It's just the album feels really short. In fact, I gave it three listens one day while I was sitting here working. I just had it going. It was kind of like, God damn, did it fucking finish? Because, you know, Spotify will play through and then it will automatically make suggestions based off of the genre. So I'm sitting there listening to it and then all of a sudden fucking some video popped off and I'm like, what the fuck? And I went back, started in the beginning and started working again. It was just kind of letting it sit in the background while I was working. And then there was fucking um, Ozzy Osbourne popped off right after. I'm like, wow, this is a really, really 
uh, short album. And it's kind of crazy because, you know, like I said, a lot of the tracks are like two minutes, maybe three minutes for some of them. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty, pretty fucking short tracks. And I was like, all right, that's fine. You know, I mean, historically, that's that's about right. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But um, the other thing I was going to tell you guys as far as the Bulldog, the reason I really like the Bulldog is it's got vanilla, it's got honey, and it's just, I swear to all my everything, this shit is probably the best root beer on the planet. And I've even tried to make my own uh, and try to make it better, and I can't. It is really good. It's super good, actually. In fact, because I'm so blunted from this shit. My mouth and tongue is really numb, so I'm kind of curious what... Oh, that's good. That's good. What's up? Swamp Donkey Jeeper in the motherfucking house. What's up? So, yeah, guys, seriously, you got to check out Maddie Matheson. He makes really fucking crazily good videos. The production value on that is amazing. Steve1989, he'll say, put it on a plate. Or, no, put it on a tray. Nice. <laughs> nice hiss. <laughs> this is so fucking awesome, you know. And it's just watching his videos. It's just, they just make you smile. You know, you just see somebody that is authentically loving his shit and you're just like dude you're the motherfucker right and then uh uh the other thing i was going to tell you guys is remember uh if you haven't checked it out yet i went back on that tops daily grind and i listened to it and i because before you know when i when i did the show earlier in that day i was supposed to go to the er and um we actually got there and the place was fucking packed and i'm like you know what Fuck this. I'll come back. I got to do the show with Tops. And after I'm done with them, then I'll go back to the ER. So I did the show with them. I was in agonizing pain. Um, I was talking crazy talk. And, uh, you know, they were egging it on. They were asking, what's your craziest conspiracy? And then I went there. And, you know, some of the things I kind of, uh, I kind of misspoke on a couple of things. But I was like, ah, fuck. People that know me know what the fuck I'm trying to say. And uh, they were good sports. They were. It was a good fun. We had a lot of laughs and everything. And so that's out. I think you can just go to topsdailygrind.com tops or some shit. Or just search for that. And then you'll see I was the last, very last episode. And then, uh, that's funny. I don't have my, um, I have some other stuff I was going to tell you guys. And I don't see it. Oh, here it is. Maybe it's on the side of Constance. Ah, yes. So last week I did, um, on the Robert R. Rick side, we did our very first episode of Mr. Trouble, uh, which I enjoyed uh, immensely. But I got to be honest with you guys, having, you know, three viewers uh, on the show, kind of, it's kind of like, ah, eh, okay. So it's like I'm performing, I'm just kind of doing them. I got all this content out there. Uh, and it's like, huh, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult. And so there's the software we use for that show is called streamtalking.com. I did see a lot of people. Holy fuck. I don't know where they came from, but I have at least 35 people signed up on that some bitch. And I can see that they're signed up. I can see their usernames. I can see all this other stuff, but I'm not seeing them actually answering questions. So once you are subscribed and you're or actually not subscribed once you have an account inside of stream talking then the next step is to go look at the different streams and see what questions are there and then go ahead and answer them and so when i'm doing stuff like the real-time story time and it's funny because my daughter she's so fucking eagle-eyed she was looking at that she goes yeah you got a typo on that very first one i'm like some of a bitch she goes nobody saw that i go no nobody even watches my shit <laughs> <laughs> but she spotted it right away. She's like, yeah, your exploration needs to have an X in there, right there, right there. X, X, it's exploration. But, um, you know, there's a ton of fucking content up there. And on noveps.com, right now on noveps.com, if you go to noveps.com, um, three of my books, Rusted Blade, Three Simple Rules, 
and Infernal Justice all have free audiobooks up there. They're all up there for free, motherfuckers. So I was like, okay, can Rob tell stories? Is he good at fucking telling stories? Yeah, you can go check that shit out. Let's see here. Um, yeah, Kinnett says, I totes tune in to real time story time. Rob falls on a work night, and due to the time differences, I need to sleep. Yeah, no, you know what, dude? You're completely good. Um, I think what I'm basically getting at is, is this extremely difficult to grow that channel and get more people checking it out? Just because you don't have a lot of people that are keen to storytelling. I told my wife, though, I said, you know, it'd be fucking hilarious if my ass was in prison. I'd probably be popular as shit because it'd be like, you know, hey, what's up, uh, uh, Undertaker? What would you like? I want to have. Uh, uh, school girls and dresses. All right, school girls and dresses. What about you, puppet? I want hot tacos. Yeah, hot tacos. You know, <laughs> and then I sit and tell fucking stories and be like, yeah, tell that motherfucking story. You know, because starved for entertainment. But when you're competing with, you know, Netflix and all, I mean, <laughs> and, and competing with shit like, um, where's he at? Where's he at? Uh, you know, the likes of. You know, Steve1989, hey, I get it. I get it. I can't hold a match to this motherfucker, you know? Same with Maddie. You know, Maddie, his content is produced. It's great. It's fucking hilarious. It's a universal thing with food. And, you know, so you're sitting there saying, hey, I got a story of a fucking uh, an entity named Mr. Trouble that compels you to do whatever he says if you've done anything evil or blah, blah, blah. You know, some people be like, yeah, that sounds fun. It's kind of like a live creepypasta. But not everybody's going to be fucking wanting to check that shit out you know but we do do that every sunday so if you do want to pop in and check it out highly recommend you do also just go ahead and like i said go to streamtalking.com create an account and basically what happens is you create some keywords some or a phrase or something maybe a keyword could be like erection a keyword could be like you know dick hard enough to scratch glass you know what i'm saying and I have to figure out how to take those keywords or phrases and put those in a fucking story, you know. And then I basically have a couple minutes to look at these keywords and then figure out the base story. And for the most part, um, I think there's only been maybe three or four times where I might have overlooked a keyword. I think the most notorious one, my wife used to sit in here with me when we were doing the real time uh, stuff early. Okay, bye, honey. Um, early on, and we had one called Taste the Rain uh, Skittles, Taste the Rainbow, or some shit like that. And there was something in there like wet pussy or some shit, and I almost forgot it. And she could hear in the background blurt out, "You forgot the the sp or stinky pussy or something." It was something funny as fuck though. She said something like, she yelled out, "You could hear in the background, you forgot the stinky pussy." I go, "Oh shit!" And so. <laughs> continue the story and those were those were pretty hilarious because those days she kept trying to add sound effects and so one time she was trying to put wind on the sound effect and she made a fart because <laughs> she had a little sound box that she didn't remember which one was which but she saw wind right so she quickly said Brrr. and so i was like that's not the sound but it was pretty funny and then it's evolved as time went by and so now we're all high tech with the stream talking.com and everything so anyway check that out again i'm going to plug this shit right here these three stories right here i'm pretty happy with i got two more that i'm going to do audiobooks for uh, do just kill yourself and um, augmented truth but right now rusted blade is up there uh three simple rules is up there Infernal Justice was the last one that I just did, and this is really fucking dark, which is why there's, um, there is all of these, uh, um, parental advisory, uh, advisory pieces and shit like that, because it's, it is not suitable for work. It's not some shit you want to have playing in the background and have your, your boss walk in, because there's some, there's some parts you guys will listen to and go, what? the fuck so anyway check those out if you guys can just let me know what you fucking think i i get really excited and giggly when motherfuckers uh check my shit out and then they ask me questions and we talk about it and everything else um now we're gonna we're gonna do our little positivity piece right here look i know a lot of us feel like 
the world around us is just turning to shit. You know, we see craziness in the news. We hear all this negativity, blah, blah, blah. But the most important thing to remember is two things. One, did you die? Right? You want to try to stay positive. You want to try to be like, try to convince yourself that you're fucking invincible. You're invulnerable. You want to you wanna tell yourself constantly that you are an immune fucking Hulk. You don't want to tell yourself, oh my God, I might die. Oh, I might get sick. You don't ever want that negativity creep in your head. You don't want any of that shit to fuck with you. You want to be positive. You want to remember all of the things that are super important. Because the dark, the darkness that is around us that is trying to fuck us constantly is trying to keep us in perpetual fear, is trying to make us mad at each other, is trying to create division, is trying to create the hate. And if you give in to that, they win, right? Now remember, here's a real simple thing to keep in mind. How long can you stay mad? How long can you stay sad? How long can you do all of these, these negative things before you become completely exhausted? You can't maintain constant negativity. It's very difficult. You actually have to work at it. Now, if you flip it around, love is the only thing that can go exponential with no effort. You know, all of us parents or all of us, uh, you know, people who, who love others and have other people that have come into our lives and have wondered, wow, how can I possibly love another person as much as I love this one? We'll get that, right? Now, if you're the kind of person who doesn't, um, doesn't have family or anything else, just trust me when I say love grows exponentially. You know, if you had one puppy, for an example, and then you got another puppy and you're like, well, I'll never love this puppy as much as I love this other puppy. Well, yeah, uh, unless that second puppy is a real piece of shit. Yeah, you probably will. It'll melt your heart and you'll fucking love that thing as well. So try to be positive. Try to always find the silver lining. Try to find something you can learn or take away from a situation so that it's not so fucked up, not so negative. Now, the second point. And this is only for people that have faith. This is only for people who believe in a higher power. I don't give a fuck what you call it. But for people like myself who believe in a higher power, I believe everything happens for a reason. I believe I have a path that I'm supposed to walk. I believe that I'm going to do what's important. Now, we do have the freedom of choice. We can choose what we do and what we don't do. But I also feel that there is a guiding hand, kind of like a father looking after his son saying, hey, kiddo, I think this would be good for you. Ultimately, your kid gets to decide, but I still think there is an influence there, even if it's nothing more than this planet around us with some of the safeguards and, and checks and balances that exist here, okay? So that's it. That's all I want to say about that. And the third thing, I want to agree with William Brown. Pops knives are the best knives. You know what? And I cannot argue with that because I am not only, not only do I like Pops, I rock Pops all the fucking time. And, uh, I mean, shit, everywhere I look, there's a fucking Pops blade here, you know? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Right? But also because of the way that the company runs itself, Craig, Leo, those guys, they're all fucking amazing. They're all good fucking guys. They're, it's not a big, giant company. It's like a family business. It really is. And finally, to end the show out, I do once again want to call out um, Mike. You're gone, but you won't be forgotten. And uh, you touched a lot of people, and a lot of people love you and will miss you and will keep you alive in their heart. And so, you know, it's just, uh, he was a good guy. So I'm really grateful he created Tops. I'm really glad he handed that baton over to Leo. Leo is doing an amazing job running that place, 
championing it, you know, keeping his crew solid. So I know you guys are hurting right now because one of yours is gone, but he won't be forgotten. All right, so, well, I don't have any alcohol open, but I'll just toast him anyway. Mike, classy motherfucker. Uh, I know one day I'll see you and we'll, whatever, if there's something equivalent to drinking, wherever that may be. Cheers, motherfucker. All right, guys, that's pretty much going to be the show. We do this every fucking Saturday, 7 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Uh, sometimes we cover heavy duty shit like news and stuff. A lot of times we cover entertainment, other fun things. I try to cover something in video games. I try to cover something in either movies or TV. Uh, I try to touch on a little bit of music. I try to touch on um, anything else that's entertainment based. One thing I'm looking forward to, um, I'm really, really, really looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077 uh, when that pops off in December, December 10th. So we don't have to wait very long. And uh, for you guys coming in late, I will be having an operation on December 16th that will probably fuck up my uh, schedule for a while. But we'll see what's what. We'll, we'll play it by ear. But uh, if you guys want to throw some positive vibes my way, uh, you know, um, things like that, right around December 16th, I would greatly fucking appreciate being in anybody's fucking prayers, you know, positive, you know, blow some, uh, you know, Good smoke, everything else. Anything and everything. You know, cry it out to the universe. Hey, look after Rob. Make sure his ass shit, you know, goes well. I greatly appreciate it. And that's it. So tomorrow night, we will be doing a real-time story time. That's on uh, YouTube.com slash Robert R. Ricks. There is an R in the middle, so you'll see double R's right there. Robert R. Ricks, one word. And, um, again, just go ahead and... Uh, Stop by stream, uh, streamtalking.com, create an account on that motherfucker, and um, there's already a thing up there for Mr. Trouble number two, and uh, we're going to do the continuation from what we started last week with Mr. Trouble number one. All right, guys, that's going to be it for now. If you like it, like it, please subscribe. Tell your friends far and wide. Uh, ooh, root beer, excuse me. Rewind that. Give up, up, give up, 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 up. Okay, try it again. If you like it, like it, please subscribe. Tell your friends far and wide. Until next time, motherfuckers, please be good to yourself, good to each other. Go out, live lights in the fullest light of us in the list, fall off, have some adventures, get some scars, find some love, and all that jazz. And I'll see you motherfuckers next time.